And welcome back to another edition of Two Dudes in a Mexican. Uh, Post-draft edition, I'm your host, and am Victor Salazar. To one of the screens somewhere around here on the Zoom call is my uh, co-host, some dude named Peter Soprano. What up, what up? And somewhere in the uh, internet world of Zoom is the resident Mexican, David Quinones. Orale, mi gente. What's up, boys? Uh, so we had a draft. It was interesting. It was kind of weird to see Roger Goodell so happy to be in control of everything. But we had a draft. Pete, man, let's start it off with you, the draft guru. Tell me about the draft, man. Tell me about the 2020 virtual draft and what the well, hell happened. Well, the weird thing, well, first, the funny thing is it looked like Goodell, like, died out after the second round because he went from standing up every pick to sitting down, lounging in his couch. Like, he looked like he was done. You know? Like, I don't know what he's been doing for the break, but – he had no stamina to end it. But the third round, we didn't even see him. He just hand off to other people. But, but I thought it was a fun. And a lot of people said they really enjoyed, like, the, the coaches and general managers being around their family while they were doing it. So I know that there's a lot of talk about trying to continue some of the things that they did during this virtual draft during, when the real draft comes back next year. Well, I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I like seeing uh, – Bill Belichick's dog. I like seeing uh, <laughs> I like, empty chair. I, I, empty chair. I, I like I like seeing the refrigerator door open when Mike Mayock was making a pick. Like all that stuff, man. It was well, good to me. <laughs> well, basically, uh, Mike Mayock was making a pick, and I guess one of his kids was hungry and wanted a snack. Opened the refrigerator door right in between. So, I mean, oh man. So so I guess these people. Are, I guess these guys are real humans too. They have, you know, refrigerator doors that open. They have dogs. I mean, oh, it's, it's good to see. Goodell, you see his basement? That yeah, basement look like a mansion. <laughs> He's not normal yet. Some of the condos in the houses look sick. Oh, man. I mean, depending on where, where, where the, you know, GM show. was or each coach was. Cool. Cliff Kingsbury looked like he was from a, a part of Narcos with that house, man. He was great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, that's that was, I, yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. That's what I said about Goodell, like having to do this from his basement. Like his basement is bigger than all our houses, dude. Like, yeah. Look, like, okay, okay, Roger, like, you're being really inconvenienced. Like, dude, <laughs> come on, bro. But I know, I know, Pete, you wanted to talk about, uh, I know you wanted to talk about some draft picks uh, that surprised us. Uh, there's a lot of things to talk about. A lot of things surprised me, actually. So I'm going to let you lead it off. Well, the first thing I want to kind of go in the order of the draft order with, with some of the surprises. First thing that came up, New York Giants. Uh, a lot of people wanted them in this room, especially in this group, wanted them to pick Simmons. But we kind of expected them to take an offensive lineman. But the biggest surprise was that – two surprises were that one, they took an offensive lineman that we thought would have went a little bit lower in Andrew Thomas. And two, they actually took a second – well, they took three offensive linemen, but a second tackle. So, in my opinion, that sent a clear message to Nate Solder that you either produce right now and pretty much give up one or no sacks this year or you're going to be gone after this year. So, uh, I think Pearl and Thomas, their first and third round pick, could be their starting tackles by 2021. Yeah, I think Thomas was the safest pick out of every of the top four tackles. Uh, I think he's the most proven. A lot of the guys that we spoke about were uh, the dude, the guy from Louisville, the guy from Alabama. Yeah. Like, it, it was all upside. Every, everything I heard on ESPN and NFL Network was all upside. So what I think Gettleman is saying is, like, listen, I don't have time for upside. Yeah. be better in the long run I think get them is like well I don't have time for them to be better in the long run I need the guy that's going to be good now and he might not be the best out of them but at least he'll be a solid tackle for eight to ten years that's yeah. why I think he did that I, I agree what Dave what think? are your thoughts on the Giants yeah Dave talk, talk to me about Thomas you're a Giant fan like me I was I mean I mean listen, listen I, 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 I want I want <laughs> a Simmons, I, want a Simmons. I, I, I was a little disappointed as well because you know obviously um I, I think I said it you know, before the show, um, I wanted Simmons because I, I wanted us to make that big splash on defense. And, and again, you know, I hate to go back, but but you go back to the Super Bowl years, you know, we had, you know, that good linebacker. We had that good pass rush. We had that pressure. So um, I, I see why he went offensive line. Obviously, I guess he's trying to play to the strength, you know, the offense. Um, he wants to protect you know, uh, uh, the quarterback, you know, he, he wants to give, you know, State Quan those lanes to run. Um, <clears throat> one of the biggest problems last year for the Giants was obviously the offensive line. 
It's been, it's been like that for 10, like it's been like that forever, man. Yeah, <laughs> it has, but you know, you know, you got to protect, I guess, you know, your, your big guy who's, who's obviously Daniel Jones. So um, listen, I, I thought they had a pretty good draft. Um, I know me and Pete were talking about it uh, uh, before the show, you know, get them in the dressed, uh, you know, a lot of the holes uh, that the defense had that, you know what I'm saying? The giants as a team had. Um, we won't see obviously the results from probably two to three years from now. So, but he addressed what he needed to address. Um, you know, I really wanted Simmons that a little disappointing, but listen, I, I, I think he had a good draft. So, and obviously that remains to be seen. Question to both of you Not, real quick. Uh, do you think pro will be the starter over Solder by 2021? Oh yeah. I, I think, uh, I, I think, I think so as well. Yeah. I, I think, uh, the thing about Soldier is, is that he's, uh, he's, he doesn't mind coaching and teaching. Mm -hmm. So while he knows the guy is there to take his job, he's not going to treat her maybe like Brett Favre treated Aaron Rodgers. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like he's not going to be a douchebag to him. He's going to teach him the ins and outs. And not for nothing, Soldier made a whole lot of money. That's what I was going to say. So, so, so had, had, he's, he's, he had, he's had his stardom. You know, he's, he's won his rings. I mean, he, he, he's, he's been there. He's done that. So I, I don't think there's going to be any resentment there. So no, I, I don't either. He, he knows the business, if anything. He knows the business for a guy that won a Super Bowl in New England and then, you know, Bill Belichick just cut him loose just like that. So he knows the business. So I don't think he'll take this anyway. And he got paid. He was the highest paid left tackle for a while until yeah. uh, Larry, Larry Tunsil. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So <laughs> there's nothing for him to be mad about. All right. So moving on to the next pick was right after the Giants the Dolphins. They did decide on Tua. They kind of put out smoke screens out there that they wanted Herbert and they mm -hmm. ended up taking Tua anyway. He was their guy the whole time. Uh, it was kind of like a hidden secret and everything like that. And they also made a trade. They didn't draft a running back. They traded for Matt Breida from the San Francisco 49ers for a fifth-round pick. So I personally loved the Dolphins draft. I thought they addressed a bunch of needs. They got multiple offensive linemen, defensive linemen. They got their quarterback. They traded for the running back. I thought they did everything that pretty much they can possibly do. What did you guys think about their drafts? What do you guys think about them taking Tua? I know both of you both like them. I mean, I love Tua. I really do. I like Tua uh, as well. Uh, I think the Dolphins have a great foundation in place. I think they have a really good GM who, you know, even though he wanted to tank, still had a really good coach that wasn't going to let him tank. But yeah. there's a trust there that, you know what, I'm not going to tank. But now that I've shown you I can coach and I show you I can motivate these guys, now get me some players. And that's exactly what I think Greer did for uh, Coach uh, Brian Flores. And, Watch out, man. In two years, that could be their division. Two or three years. I mean, right now, everyone's saying it's the Bills division. We don't know what the Patriots are. Yeah. But in two to three years, you know, a lot of people are going to say that maybe Tua is the best quarterback in that division. And for a while, we, we all knew who the best quarterback in that division was. Yeah. Uh, it was Tom Brady. And, and now, technically now, we, we'll say it's Josh Allen. We don't know what yeah. Sam Darnold's going to be yet. But Josh Allen is the most promise from that draft, from the draft of Baker Mayfield and Sam Darnold. So, We'll see. I mean, I see a lot of these ESPN guys already putting Tua and Burrow as being the top two quarterback or top five quarterbacks taken in the last three years. And I'm like, come on, guys. Yeah. What did Lamar Jackson do last year? Like, yeah. we, we forgot about Lamar Jackson already. We, we're, we're forgetting about Josh Allen, who took his team second year, third year to the playoffs. Like, we're already anointing. I mean, that's – I like Tua. Bills at that. Yeah. Buffalo Bills at that. Like, I like Tua. I think he's going to be a star in this league. Uh, I mean, God willing, he's, he's like – He's, he's on that Carson Wentz type of timetable. Like, if he's healthy, he's going to be good. If he's not, then you know what? You're going to end up drafting Jalen Hurts in two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what would you think about their most? Yeah, listen, I, 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 I'm with Vic and, and, uh, and you. I, I, I thought Miami had a, a really, really good uh, draft this, uh, um, this past year. Um, we said it before, man, I, I really like Tua. I, I think there's just a, a lot of big upside with him. Obviously, the big question is going to be his health. Um, you know, can that hip, uh, did it heal properly? I mean, but I, I, I think this is going to be a good place for him uh, in order to mature, in order to make that offense better. But they definitely, they definitely uh, addressed uh, uh, some of the holes they had, obviously because of uh, trades and, 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 and uh, players that, that left their team. So, um, you know, I, I, I definitely think they get a high grade too, man, probably like an A or something like that with this draft. So. I thought they had one of the best drafts. And uh, they between Chris Greer – listen, Chris Greer did a great job in terms of 
I know he initially wanted to tank, but you know what? This is what he envisioned, having a bunch of picks, and I think he hit on a lot of them. But we'll see over the next couple of years. As you know, you, you can't really grade, grade them seriously without seeing them play. So we'll see how they work with their chemistry. Of course. I mean, it looks good on paper until it isn't on paper anymore. Yeah, exactly. So moving down a couple of picks to the other hometown team, the New York Jets. They passed on C.D. Lamb, which, which is something that I thought they shouldn't have did, but I thought they would have did, and they passed on him. And they end up taking Beckton from Louisville. C.D. Lamb falls all the way to Cowboys. We'll get to that in a second. But what do you think about the Jets actually taking a chance and going with the kind of unproven high upside Beckton over the, the more I thought they needed a top wide receiver? They got one later, but I thought C.D. Lamb was the best wide receiver. What do you think about that, Dave? Um, listen, I, I – I, we were talking about this during the draft, man. I, I thought they should have went with C.D. Lamb as well. Um, but, again, they, they, they addressed uh, something concerning to them. You know, uh, you know, you know Darnold took a back seat last year, obviously because of injuries and stuff like that. But they want to they want to protect him, <clears throat> kind of like what the Giants are doing, you know, trying to protect Jones. So, um, you know, Denzel Mims is not a bad pick. Um, you know, he, he, he's not a small receiver. So, um, he's got pretty good speed. You know, six uh, three, uh, like two ten or something like that. So I, I, I think they did pretty good in the draft as well. So um, again, they they addressed a couple of things they needed. Kind of the same thing like the Giants, man. Like I wanted the Giants to make that big splash with Simmons. You know that that would have been a big splash. I think for their offense to have a guy like C.D. Lamb, especially with Darnold, because he ha- he needs that number one. So yes. uh, you know, obviously losing Robbie Anderson to to free agency, but. Um, I, I think they had a, 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 a decent draft. So, um, I, I, here, here's, the, here's the difference between Dave Gutterman and the Jets GM. Dave Gutterman's job is on the line, and, and the Jets GM has at least three years. So he can pick a guy with upside here. Um, you know, it's, it's like he, Becton can probably be the best tackle in this draft based off, you know, his physicality, yeah. his measurements. I mean, he's 6'7". 318, 319, it runs a, you know, what was it, like a 4, 9, 5, 1, 40? Like, yeah. that's insane for a lineman, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's actually even bigger than that, too. <laughs> yeah, he might be bigger than that, right? But he, he ran the best times as a lineman. He ran times at tight ends run yeah. uh, as a tackle. So, the Jets have some time. The GM for the Jets has time to, to make these upside picks. And though I like the pick, I like the upside pick, I think you got to get Sam Darnold a number one receiver at this point. I mean, this is going to be – his uh, third year in the league, I want to say, third yeah. year in the league, and 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 he regressed last year. I think he he was seven and six, but there's games that he was, just wasn't there. He was either partying with Pete or he was <laughs> he was looking at ghosts or whatever. He saw ghosts. So you're gonna give this guy two number two receivers. You're not gonna give this guy a number one receiver yet, and you're not gonna see his talent until he gets a number one receiver. And in a time where you need to win. When you have these quarterbacks on their rookie contracts, I, I just think you, you had to give them a wide receiver in that, in that portion. And maybe they do something via free agency. I'm not sure what's out there anymore. Probably, there's no number one receivers out there. Maybe they do a trade. Maybe something happens. But I think the pick right there was, was CeeDee Lamb or even, or even uh, uh, the dude from Alabama, not the fast one. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Judy. Yeah. I, I would have taken Judy at that point. Judy or Lamb. I, get, I think that was the easy pick to make. And I get it. They want their Debrickershaw Ferguson. But we'll see what happens. Time always tells. Maybe Le'Veon Bell has, you know, a Le'Veon Bell type season and make things easier for Sam Darnold. And then we, we get a number two receiver that has 80 receptions on that team. But, again, it's, it's, all, it's all on paper now. So we'll have to see what happens. You know what's the weird thing about them, them and the Giants is that, uh, as Dave said, they didn't make the flashy pick or the guy that he thought could be uh, an Isaiah Simmons could be the best player in the draft. Uh, CeeDee Lamb could be the best wide receiver in the draft. But they took the safe thing and they took the thing what, yeah. what football teams are made of, offensive line. Like, if you want to have a good offense, you've got to have a good offensive line. But you can have the yeah. best wide receiver in the world, but if nobody's blocking for the quarterback, he's not going to get him the ball. So even though I think <clears> this, the picks can be questioned because maybe they could have gotten an offensive line later, I think that when we look back at this in two years, I don't think it'll be a bust type of pick, no matter what. That, that's the thing about no, it. No, I don't think it'll be a bust. I no, I don't think, think so right either, pick. yeah. I just yeah, think the so right pick was, was, a, was a number one wide receiver there. I think the and another the right thing pick. about Denzel Mims, though, uh, I had him as a first-round type player. 
I thought he would have been picked in the first 22, 23 picks. So I have him as a good wide receiver. So for them to get mm-hmm. him in the second round, they did get him at very good value. So he, he may end up being, like they said, he's 6'3". He's around 210. He ran a 4'3", 940. He has the speed, the size. He had two straight 1,000-yard seasons. So he has the resume to be a number one. So who knows? Maybe the am I, am I, am I just Yeah, it might just take him longer. You're right. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. So moving on to the pick that was right after the Jets was the first, in my opinion, the first kind of weird pick, but it was an old school pick. The Las Vegas Raiders, I almost called them Oakland, but I didn't call them. The Las Vegas Raiders they took their first ever draft pick, and it was Henry Ruggs, not Judy, not Lamb. They went for the old school Al Davis super fast pick. Do you agree with this pick, or do you think it's just weird? It's, it's typical Oakland Raiders, man. It is. Typical <laughs> when, you, when you have the best, you know, arguably the two best wide receivers, you can make, you know, uh, you, you can flip a yeah. coin and you, you'll either get Judy or you get yep. uh, CeeDee Lamb. No one thought uh, Riggs was the uh, best receiver in this draft, not, yeah. not by a mile. Okay. Uh, but but it's, it's what the Raiders do, right? They always go for the fastest guy in the field. Yeah. And some, some you can say it's valid <laughs> because there's a team in Kansas City that is pretty fast. Yeah. Uh, and maybe they want to keep up with them at that point. But I just think uh, Judy, probably the best route runner in this draft. Yeah. And, and CeeDee Lamb, with everything that he has, is probably the best receiver here. To get a one-dimensional receiver here in this, in this, uh, in this spot, I think was a mistake. I think he could have got Riggs later. But even if you didn't get Riggs, you, you would have got one of the two best receivers, either an excellent route runner or just a total package in CeeDee Lamb. Dave, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 it's definitely risky, um, I think. So, um, you know, I think Ruggs is incredibly talented. Um, if, you, if you watch his tape, he's fast. He is a burner. Um, yeah. But uh, I think it's, it's a lot of risk, especially for a, a pick that high. Um, I definitely either would have went with CeeDee Lamb or, you know, or Jerry Judy. But, I mean, that's the Raiders, man. That's Las Vegas. Is Carr even going to get on the ball? <laughs> I, I, I guess. I mean, he better. I mean, especially a pick that high. So, um, but I, I'll be honest, I'm not surprised. I mean, because traditionally, yeah, they, they have gone for those speedsters that, you know, pretty much kind of don't amount to anything, you know. Um, so, or at least they're, they're, they're not, you know, um, picks that, that – that you know grow and, and, and look good later on so I'm, I'm not surprised I'm not surprised by this pick so yeah it's, it's gonna be crazy to see what happens because I know there was already like a, a video out there of like a fake mm-hmm. what how it's gonna look with Derek Carr trying to throw the beat one he threw it like five yards like you can't, <laughs> I mean, he's never really been a deep thrower I mean we'll see it this year to see if he can open it up a little bit but it's just a weird fit because unless you have a strong arm quarterback I mean Mahomes can throw to those fast wide receivers like we don't know if Carr can actually get it to those fast wide receivers. We don't even know if Carr still is a quarterback. I think I think John yeah. Gruden, John Gruden, like, like makes this guy crawl under a bed and hide. Like he, he treats him <laughs> like crap. I mean, in, in an age in an age where qu- quarterbacks are coddled, John Gruden is like ruining Derek Carr's psyche. I mean, <laughs> if, if if you saw Hard Knocks last year, like he was really tough on him, man. Yeah. Listen, I, I don't mind my coach being tough with my quarterback, but yeah. in an era where you got to baby these quarterbacks and quarterbacks <laughs> aren't as strong, tough-minded, like maybe the Bradys and the Breeze of the world that we have left now, like everyone wants to be coddled. Everyone wants the players coach. I don't know, man. <laughs> and Derek Carr, I, I, I think Gruner's going to move on from Derek Carr in like a year, man. I, I'm actually surprised he hasn't moved on from him yet. <laughs> like, I mean – I mean, who knows? Like, we, we may – what happened last year with the Titans with how Mariota got replaced by Tannehill. Maybe this year Mariota will be replacing Carr in the middle of the year. But the yeah, offense yeah. did pretty good at the end there. So, I mean, they were winning, winning games. I mean, that offense started clicking. So, tough. I mean, may, maybe what Gruden's doing is working. I mean, you, you never know. Well, we'll see. It remains to be seen. It remains to be seen. It's just a small sample size. Yeah. But we'll see the Las Vegas Raiders. I mean, win, yeah. baby, win is the slogan. They haven't won much in years. <laughs> there you go. And sometimes when you ch- change the venue, you change the city, man. I mean, hey, anything can happen. So. Yeah, or you, or, 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 or grew it on Gamble on his team and be banned from <laughs> – Football Listen, like Pete Rose. <laughs> people, yeah, exactly. People killed Gruden when he took over that team. He traded Mac and he traded all. But you know, if they hit on their draft picks, like they turned around the defense last year, they got sacks from everybody that they drafted. So if they got a couple of people this year that can work out, I mean, that team's going to turn around much faster than people think. Like, I know, I know, it's good to make fun of people, and especially on social media and Gruden and everything like that. But he's already turned that team around to where they were a tough team last year. 
right? So moving on to the next team. Teams, we already were speaking about wide receivers, speaking about speed, and now we move on to the Dallas Cowboys, who I'm going to say they were lucky for Lamb that they were able to get <laughs> Lamb to drop that far down to number 17. And yeah. to, me, to me, they also had one of the best drafts that, of anybody because they got Lamb. Their three biggest needs were a wide receiver, third wide receiver, <laughs> they needed a center to replace Cedric, who retired, and they needed a cornerback. And they got Lamb in the first round, luckily. Trayvon Diggs, who I thought was a first-round pick, propelled him in the second round. And then later on, they, they got the center from Wisconsin. And, and we always know that centers or any offensive line from Wisconsin is usually going to be pretty solid. And they got him. So they filled all the needs that I thought they needed to fill. And I think they're going to be one of the favorites and a legitimate favorite, not just a paper favorite this year. Uh, what do you think, Vic? Listen, I, I think uh, CD Lamb falling on their laps was, was – you know, you had to take him. You, you couldn't just pass up on him. You know, Atlanta's the best wide receiver in track. Uh, Atlanta's stupid. They could have had, you know, three type one receivers, Calvin Ridley, Julio Jones, oh. you know, that and, and CeeDee Lamb, probably the best wide receiving core in football. Yeah. Give Matty Ice, you know, some time. You give Matty Ice some, another weapon. You know, Mohamed Sanu is no CeeDee Lamb. I know CeeDee Lamb is a rookie and all, but I saw what he can do. And, and he's he, – Mohamed Sanu is no CeeDee Lamb. Yeah. Um, but the Cowboys did what they were supposed to do. Finally, you know, they got Dak another weapon. They shored up their corner, uh, their defensive back position, and they got a center. But again, they are the Dallas Cowboys, and they always win on paper. It doesn't <laughs> matter what they do. They always win on paper. Right. When, it comes down, when it comes down to it, the Cowboys always disappoint. I'm not sure what's going to happen this year. I think, to me, the, the, the clear favorite in the NFC is still the 49ers. They said, F this offensive thing that you guys have got going on in the rest of the league. We're going to stack up our defensive line. We're going to, you know, trade for this offensive tackle. We're going to beat you in the trenches. And you know what? If we had, if we had two more defensive tackles last year, we might be Super Bowl champions. So we got the formula. So I think the Cowboys are up there. I mean, it's still a toss-up between Philly and Dallas and the NFC East. But it, the NFC just in general, you have – teams that are stacked it's, it's a stack it's the stack conference dude like it's it's to make the playoffs is just going to be tough like you're not going to sneak into the playoffs in the nfc and to come out of the nfc you're going to come out black and blue then you know it's going to be a tough a tough 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 threading for any team to come out of the nfc and especially any team that has to go to san francisco and play that defense but i, I give them an a for their draft and 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 i'm a cowboy hater but again it's always on paper the cowboys look good it's never on the field what do you think, Dave? Yeah, uh, listen, I agree, man. The, the Cowboys, you know, they, they came out, you know, with a really, really good draft. Uh, um, probably one of the best uh, out of the whole league. So, um, obviously, C.D. Lambs, uh, uh, you know, fell on their lap. Um, now, I mean, they have three really good wide receivers yeah. and one of the best running backs in the league. Um, they addressed, you know, their, their issue at center, you know, by dra uh, drafting, you know, the center for Wisconsin. So, that was a big need. Uh, got a couple of cornerbacks, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I think they had a really, really good draft. They addressed what they needed. And, um, you know, I, you know, I hate to say it. And again, I, I'm a Cowboy hater as well, but, uh, you know, on paper, yeah, I, I think they're the favorites to win the NFC East and probably, you know, make it, you know, definitely into the playoffs, obviously, but maybe even far into the playoffs. So better on paper, that never makes to be seen though. So, huh? They better go out there and make Dak happy. Like, he's the one who has <laughs> And that too. Us. That too, that too. But, uh, I, I mean, I think he's happy right now with C.D. Lamb. <laughs> so, in that center. So, I, I think they he's still happy. Got a, they still got to pay. And that. he's going to be so, making a lot of money this year anyway. So, uh, no. Yeah, but, I mean, you want that $31 million this year. It's great. It's a lot of money for all of us. A lot of money for he, one year. <laughs> but he signs up for a six-year deal, and he's making almost $200 million. So, it's, it's a big difference there too. So, I, I think they, they got to get him signed. I mean. You look at those wide receivers, and the one, the one, the three wide receivers that nobody really talks about is Michael Gallup, and he had 1,100 yards last year. So yeah. it's like he had 1,100. Cooper had 1,100. CD Lamb is arguably what is the best CD wide Lamb possibility? Around. I mean, oof. it's 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 going to be ridiculous. And then you can't stack against the wide receivers because then you got Zeke Elliott in the backfield. It's like it's really who do you want to track? Who are you going to put one on one? So it's going to be uh, it's like pick your everything poison, is going to be on Dak's orchestra. So they got to find a way to get him paid. Uh, but let me ask you a question, though. So, 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 I think one way or another, though, that gets money. I mean, yeah. whether it's from Dallas or whether it's from another team, because you see all these teams in the NFL, man. I mean, they're they're, they're still searching for their quarterback. 
Yeah. Um, there, there's, you know, there's, there's so many teams out there that would gladly take that cross. Yeah. Line, so he's definitely gonna get his money. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Yeah. I hope um, he gets his money and, and restricts them for like the next six years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. I don't think he's that good. So. All right, so I want to bring it down to the two quarterbacks uh, picks that surprised everybody. First, the first rounder with the Green Bay Packers, and then the second round with Jalen Hurts. I, I obviously I disagree with both of them because if you got a starting quarterback that you think is going to be there for the next two three years, I don't think you immediately take a backup in the first second round. I think you wait a little bit longer. But listen, I at least understand the Packers a little bit because I say all right, we did the same thing with Aaron Rodgers. We may be gone in two three years. We got our backup. But I don't understand the Eagles at all. Even though Wentz gets hurt a lot, you're trying to win a championship now. You're using a second round pick on on a quarterback when you're trying to win a championship now, and you've still got a lot of holes. I don't get it. So, what did you think of both teams picking quarterbacks in the first two rounds, Dave? Oh, uh, listen, yeah, I, I, I thought it was a head scratcher as well. I mean, um, you know, going with Jordan Love, uh, I can kind of see why. Like we were talking about him, man. I mean. Listen, Aaron Rodgers is not young. He's 36 years old. Yeah, he just got paid. So, um, and I think I use the analogy of, and again, I'm not saying, I'm not saying Jordan Love is Mahomes, but, you know, <laughs> look, look what Kansas City did. You know, they, they drafted Mahomes. Yeah, we're playing that with, <laughs> they drafted Mahomes with a big arm, you know, and, uh, you know, he was under the tutelage of Alex Smith. Um, and look look what it became. Um, maybe that they're, they're, they're banking on that, something like that or something close to that happening. Um, I know Aaron Rodgers is one of the best QBs in the league. Um, but listen, he's, you know, father time is father time. He's 36 years old. Um, you know, uh, his time will come or, or, or maybe he gets traded. Who knows? Uh, I, I don't know what teams, you know, are, are thinking. Uh, you know, with Jalen Hurts, I mean, J listen, Jalen Hurts, he, he's incredibly talented, uh, an incredible athlete. Um, I can kind of see a little bit is, is why, obviously, yeah, because Wentz has had his injuries. He's had, you know, health issues. Um, so, you know, maybe that's, that's, that's a backup to that or, or, or listen, or maybe they use Jalen Hurts, uh, um, in different formations. Um, you know, he just doesn't have to be used as a quarterback. He'd be used as, as, as a wide receiver, as a running back. Who knows? I mean, I, I don't know what, what their game plan is, but he's, he's an incredible athlete that can do a lot of things, not just uh, be, be a quarterback. So. Nick, what do you think about the two quarterbacks being taken so early? Uh, listen, I, I don't see the, the issue with Jordan Love being taken. I know everyone's up in arms because Aaron Rodgers and he's the best quarterback in the league or was the best quarterback in the league. But listen, they did this with Brett Favre. Yeah. You know, it wasn't like Aaron Rodgers was a third round pick. You know, he fell, he fell further than many people expected. And, and the whole story here was, damn, Aaron Rodgers being taken 20, 27, 28, 29 pick, whatever the pick was. It wasn't like, damn, why the package of trap Aaron Rodgers when it got Brett Favre? <laughs> <laughs> right, that was the story. Every everyone was looking at Aaron Rodgers that and in the draft being all mad, like really, you motherfuckers passed up on me. You did too. The 49ers passed up on me. Really, I'm from Northern California. The 49ers even passed up on me. All right, mm -hmm. I got you guys. But no one said anything about Brett Favre. But now it's Aaron Rodgers, and everyone's up in arms. Listen, Aaron Rodgers got three years left. Right, Jordan Love is still raw, still super raw. He's gonna learn behind one of the best quarterbacks that there ever is in this game. And the Packers, if, if they, they, they do the same formula that they had, then they have another franchise quarterback. And that'll be like 30, 40 years of having your <laughs> franchise quarterback. You know what I'm saying? You, you go from far to Rogers to, that, to love. It becomes a, you know what I mean? That's insane. That, that's insane. I get it that Aaron Rodgers needed a wide receiver. I mean, I, I can't believe people are, are thinking that, the, uh, that the, the second and third receivers won't grow into something having Aaron Rodgers there. Like, we know we know Devontae Adams is Devontae Adams, but uh, Vontae Scanfling, like, I, you know, he, these guys got to develop. Like, they're, they're young, you know. Yeah. So, I don't, I, don't, I don't mind the pick there. Maybe you could have got Jordan Love in the second round. But yeah. I, I don't – but either, either way, you know, if, if the Packers drafted a wide receiver, this wouldn't even be an issue. Oh, definitely not. Uh, but th that, that's where they messed up on. That's where they messed up on. So yeah. – but I don't, I don't mind the pick. The Eagles, on the other hand, have a problem on their hands. They don't trust Carson Wentz. They, they don't. just don't. They don't. Like, if, if you trusted Carson Wentz to be healthy, to be your, your, your you know, future MVP like he was two, two or three years ago when he won 13 games, yeah. like, 
then you don't pick anyone here. You don't. You don't waste a second round pick on a quarterback. He's and don't give me he's gonna be. Yeah, he, don't give me he's not gonna he's gonna be there tasting hill. No, Jalen Hurts is not gonna be there <laughs> tasting hill. All right, come on. Oh, you can run the run pass option. Carson Wentz can do that too. He's not one of these older yeah. quarterbacks that came out 12 years ago. He came out four years ago. Yeah. He knows that, that that run pass option shit. This is yeah. all because they're scared he's going to get hurt again, and there's not going to be a backup. They're going to have some dude from Willacoochee, Georgia, playing the playoff game. Then can't can't throw to anyone because Carson Wentz is brittle. So this is definitely on Carson Wentz right now. Like, you either stay healthy, bro, or you got this guy Jalen Hurts, and he's going to take your job. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, like, to, to, as soon as they made that pick, it was – actually, my mouth dropped. I was like, wow, y'all really doing that to Wentz right now? <laughs> like, I, like that, I consider that much worse than the Aaron Rodgers thing. Yeah, like, super, super. The first place I, of the I but, agree, I agree. But it was much worse. Like, you really can't do that. Like, like I you said – You better Aaron stay healthy Rodgers now. Is, <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is 36. You can see it happening. You can see them drafting the quarterback of the future. Like, you're not drafting your quarterback of the future when your quarterback is 26, 27 years old. Like, it's that, insane. He's going to be – his contract runs out after Hurts. Like, like, it makes no sense at all to crazy. do that. Like, it's crazy. I, I don't get it at all, but we'll see what happens with them. They did get a lot of people. One, one thing I want to quickly talk about is the AFC West. The AFC West went nuts on wide receivers. Like, they just – every team seemed to draft two or three wide receivers. The Raiders drafted three wide receivers. Denver, two of their first three picks were wide receivers. And everybody's trying to catch up to Kansas City. Do you think that more teams are going to go towards just drafting fast wide receivers and just trying to do what KC did? Or do you think this is just kind of a one-off because they won last year? No, I think they're doing this. It's a copycat league. And, you know, the, the saying is keep up with the Joneses. Well, you're keeping up with the Reeds and the Mahomes right now. Yeah. So that's why that division did that. You know, I like, you know, it's an approach you can do or you can have the 49ers approach and just stack up on defense and win the offense into the defense live. You know, they were there. They were they were literally 10 minutes away from winning the Super Bowl. Six that minutes, formula yeah. does work. Six minutes. That, that formula does work. So, on one hand, I get what the rest of the league is doing, and I get it. You know, the, even the Cowboys. The Cowboys went offense when they should have gone defense, most people thought. And it's an offensive league, but at the end of the day, defense does win championships. Mahomes brought them back, but don't forget Spagnola had a couple of nice blitzes in that fourth quarter. Yeah. So I, I like what the Niners are doing, man. I, I really think a lot more teams should copy what the Niners are doing. Dave, so, so, so what Dick said, do you prefer <coughs> uh, yeah, the play or the, the way that the NFC West? Listen, I think it still remains to be seen. I mean, listen, let's be honest here, man. This draft was so deep with wide receivers. Yeah. So I mean, I, I see why. Yeah, I mean, ridiculously deep with wide receivers. I mean. It was like a plethora of talent, man, and it's crazy. I didn't, and to be honest with you, I didn't realize how much talent, you know, um, was out there for the wide receiver position. It's the college. deepest position I've seen ever. Oh, it was so deep, it was crazy. So I think it still remains to be seen. So, um, but listen, I, I, I kind of agree with Vic, though. I mean, listen, defense—it's it, that old saying, right? Defense wins championships, and it really does. I mean, I, I really think so, and and I do like what you know what San Fran did with this, you know with this draft as well. I mean, you thought maybe they were going to go offense and boom, they just go defense. And, and now they just made their defense even stronger. And they had one of the best defenses, probably not, if not the best defense in the league last year, I think they got better you know, uh, with this draft. Yep. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to be crazy to see that defense. So it's, it's the, the deep, the wide receiver was by far the deepest position I've ever seen. Like one position being like, I literally had it to be like 15, 16 wide receiver deep. And you saw that because you saw six wide receivers going to first. You saw like five to seven wide receivers going to second. Yeah, it was 13 wide receivers taken in the first two rounds. Like that's that's ridiculous. And then you look at the depth of it, you got Tyler Johnson, who I had as a top 10 wide receiver. He went to Tampa Bay. He's going to be the number three wide receiver. And then he went yep. in the fifth round. You look at James Proch, who I thought was also a good, a good slot wide receiver. He goes to, I think he went to Baltimore Ravens in like the sixth round. And and then you look at like Antonio Gold, um, Golden, he goes to the Redskins in like the sixth round. Like those guys are guys that I consider top ten wide receivers in the draft. So that'll tell you how deep that this draft was, and that you can get one in the sixth, seventh round. It was just crazy. So oh. I I thought the draft was a great time. Uh, I watched it. I usually watch it a lot, but I paid attention to it a lot more because there's nothing else going on. 
Um, as a, as a quick or, roundup, what are you guys? What are you guys' final impressions on the draft this past weekend? Uh, I'll go first. I, I, like I said, I liked it. I, I liked the virtual. I mean, I, I, you do miss the fans. You do miss the reactions. You do miss the fans going to Dell. Like, I miss that. Like, those booze from the virtual little screen Absolutely. that they had. That was pretty stupid. Yeah. Um, but, I, but, I, but I liked it. I, I liked the virtual part. I liked the, the human, humanizing part of seeing these coaches, these general managers, you know, in their home, not in a normal draft room. Like, I also liked the fact that they have backstories. They have more backstories. Uh, some of these players than they do when they normally have it. And to be honest, the first round went quicker than it has in the last two or three years. Like, yeah. no one really used the full 10, 15 minutes, whatever the time slot was, minus the Cincinnati Bengals, who had <laughs> six months. We had six months to, to figure out, you know, who they had to pick. You know, as soon as, as soon as someone was picked, like, they went to the family's house, and, like, three or four minutes later, somebody else's pick was in, and somebody else's pick was in. Like, it was really fast. And, and maybe because it was virtual that it was fast, yeah. and you didn't have Deion Sanders and, you know, whoever from ESPN interviewing the players right after. So it's like it didn't drag it out that long where you had to wait 17 minutes between pick one and pick two. So if, if they can, like, figure out a way to make this draft somewhat shorter live, Without being virtual, I'm all for it. That, that's what I got from the virtual thing. It's just the, the quickness of the picks. What do you think, Dave? Yeah, I enjoyed it. I mean, obviously, you know, the, 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 there's not there's not much to, to, to watch, especially when it comes to sports, you know, except for reruns. But uh, it was great, man, to have that human element, uh, you know, to see, you know, some of these players, you know, waiting and, and to see the reactions of their families and, and what they do and, and, you know, some of the non reactions. It, it was crazy, man. It was it was really nice to see all that stuff. So um, uh, supposedly they're gonna they, they they're gonna use what what, what kind of worked, you know, uh, this draft for the next one. So it'll be cool to see a combination of of you know what traditionally it is to you know what it is now. So um, should be cool for next year. So. All right. So with that said, the NFL draft is now wrapped up. We get to have virtual training camps as, as guys are starting to call in, learn their playbooks, and everything like that. In a couple of weeks, the schedule will be out. You get to see when hopefully we'll be able to get games maybe next year, I would think. So, with that said, next year? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking, next year. Like, maybe next calendar year, not football season year. So, maybe we'll do it. <laughs> Listen, man, there's, there's parks there's parks that are opening up next week. Yeah, so, they are. maybe, maybe, I just don't maybe know that's a good turn. I just don't people in a building, though. <laughs> I, I, I'd rather watch it without fans, yeah. to be honest with you. The only thing, my only, my only gripe with that is that, you know, if – you're constantly testing these players, and we don't we don't have, you know, an enormous amount of tests for the regular people. Like that's my only gripe with it. Yeah. If that's the case, then I'd rather them hold off until everyone can be tested and, and people. Obviously, you know, this is a corporate world, capitalism. People with money are gonna get the test, but that's my only like moral gripe with sports coming back is the constant test that they're gonna be receiving, where they don't need it. Where there's people out there that need the test and can't get it. You know, don't have access to it, yeah. but. If we can figure out a way to make it happen where everyone gets a test and we got football, baseball, basketball, hockey, I'm all for it. All right. So with that being said, don't take the test away from the real people. We need it too. So or, <laughs> this, is, this is only the first, first part of Two Dudes in the Mexican. We wanted to get you the football stuff. We're going to come back and talk about the documentary for part two. So come back and see us for that in a second. All right? Peace. Later, mi gente.